My next guest is a leader of the movement that's helped change the game for female comic writers, illustrators, and characters. And while the comic book industry has been seen as a largely male-driven community, women have actually been an important, as we know, part of history since the 40s, though. But it's also been recent that many of them have received public recognition, finally, for their contributions. As an award-winning writer of story arcs for Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Supergirl, Captain Marvel as well. Kelly Sue DeConnick has made it her mission to keep the trend going. She's also helping showcase the incredible works of people from diverse genders and giving a voice to young creators ready to help change the game in the comic book world. Some of the most famous superheroes owe their popularity to the female creators behind them. In the 1940s, Superman was edited by Dorothy Wolfham. She created Kryptonite, rendering Superman invincible. Wonder Woman, whose first female writer was Joy Hummel, had to use the pseudonym Charles Moulton. Daredevil, written by Anne Nascenti, tackled social issues like government and feminism. And even villains like Apocalypse, known for the X-Men series, was created by comic book legend Louise Simonson. Inspired by the women before her, Kelly Sue DeConnick has been carrying the torch by making sure women are better represented both on the pages and behind the scenes of the comic book industry. DeConnick created the hashtag Visible Women to build a database of female creators, changing the game for generations to come. Please welcome comic book writer Kelly Sue DeConnick to the TAMP. And Kelly Sue, thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Hello. I have this in my hand, Wonder Woman his Historia, the Amazons. Let me tell you, just to call you a comic book writer is an understatement. They need to create a whole new title for what you've <laughs> done and what you do. Uh, I, I'm so incredibly flattered to be here with you today and uh, incredibly intimidated to be following uh, Mr. Oakley. Oh, <laughs> listen, the last enforcer. Well, you've enforced rules of your own kind and that the first of the rules is to include women and not just include women, but make sure that we are acknowledged for it. You wrote for the comic book character Captain Marvel. You made changes to her name and wardrobe going from Ms. Marvel to Captain Marvel. That is so significant. And I'm sure when you heard the feedback from readers, it had to feel validating as well because it was applauded. Yeah, absolutely. Not universally. These well, things never are. Universal. But um, yeah. when you come in uh, to working on a comic book character, you have to strike a balance. This is no matter what your initiative is. You need to strike a balance between honoring what has come before you and bringing something new and modern to the yeah. table. And that's all we were really trying to do was honor what had come before, but also acknowledge that there were some things we could redirect, like the idea that any female comic book character was just sort of like the um, the off center equivalent of the male character, right. right? No, these were these were women who were bringing their own powers and their own qualities to the table, and um, and they deserved to like be in the main line of that lineage. Well, what I also love is that, and fans love this too, that with Captain Marvel, you gave a military background that focused on her leadership skills. Um, wh why do you think that was a game-changing, since that's the theme of this show, uh, decision as well. She's actually been a military character since her first appearance in 1963, Carol Danvers. Yeah. But we really tried to emphasize that from a personal experience God. perspective. So um, I grew up on Air Force bases because um, that's what my dad did for a living. And sometimes we don't, in our culture, we don't have a lot of archetypes for women in the military. Yeah. And so when we, you know, you think of men in the military and there's all these different ideas that you can go to for what that archetype means. But for women, it can kind of mean like a, a fun wrecker, right? Like right. by the books. And, and I was like, no, 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 no. I grew up around pilots. There is a twinkle in a pilot's eye that is a very special thing. So with Carol as Captain Marvel, we were really focused on kind of giving her that pilot swagger. Bigger than, and, and, and one of the biggest things I think that you've done, obviously what you do creatively is phenomenal, but legacy-wise, you created the hashtag visible women, and it grew this database for female comic book creators. That is so game-changing, but also it will speak to your legacy. Yeah, 
When I first appeared at New York Comic Con as a creator, uh, there was a Women of Marvel panel. Mm -hmm. And there were, I think, four women on the stage, and I was the only one who was in one of the main creative roles. Uh, and that was kind of jarring to see. Um, and so we started working on expanding that and inviting more women into visible roles. And we, there was this perception that women didn't want to do this work. And so what was really important was to say, like, no, 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 no. Look, the industry isn't, people aren't actively trying to keep women out when they're hiring, but they hire the people that they're used to hiring, that they know they can depend on because it's a quick turnaround. Mm. So what we wanted to do was raise the vi visibility, rather, right. of women who not only wanted to work in the industry, but already had been putting the years in so that it was easier to hire them so you knew you could depend on them. And once you open that door, more follow. And so the, the next time I did the Women of Marvel panel, or the last time I did it rather, there were so many women on the stage, I actually had to sit on the edge of the dais. That's phenomenal. Up next, how Kelly Sue DeConi partnered with the late Congressman John Lewis to create comic books with a purpose. That's next. I'm a full-time comic artist. I actually worked at a comic shop for a really long time. It was around 2015 that I made the switch. I came across the Visible Women hashtag back in 2016, where I actually got one of my first collaborators reach out to me. And since then, I've worked with a handful of people from the Visible Women hashtag. Kelly Sue has totally changed the game. Thank you for making that hashtag awesome for us to have reach a in terms of the industry and to support and uplift women and non-binary creators. Oh, wow, that was Liana, a woman comic book creator who's helped by Kelly's mission for female visibility in the male-dominated industry and Kelly's game-changing efforts don't stop there. I love the connection you have, um, Kelly Sue, with Congressman John Lewis. You actually had a chance to meet him. Uh, for a lot of people, they don't know that he loved comics and graphic novels. He said the novels were a way of leaving a civil rights roadmap for future generations. Tell me about meeting him. Oh, he's, he was such an extraordinary man, and it was a phenomenal honor. I don't no, there's so much to say about him, but I think the thing that was so striking to me was um, his gentleness. Um, there's obviously he was a very fierce fighter and um, a resilient and powerful and strong man, but he was also incredibly gentle. I was actually at dinner with him when we found out, I got a, a text that let me know that my um, father-in-law had passed mm. and the congressman uh, didn't just excuse me from the dinner, but got up and walked me to the Mater D and made sure that I could get on the service elevator to get down and be with my family. Uh, he followed up with me. And then years later, when he uh, met my, my husband, my husband said, you won't remember this, but... And the congressman took his hand and said, your father passed. Oh. Uh, that was just the kind of person that he was. And uh, just just generous and gentle and the strongest core of, of any person you could ever have the opportunity to meet. A real superhero, 100%. to be honest. A real superhero. I got before we let you go, your latest project is what I have in my hand. Wonder Woman Historia. Fans have gone crazy. They say it's a timeless classic. It took three years to make it. Why did you want to carefully craft this origin story? Give me a little bit of what was going on in your mind and your creativity process. I wanted to read for myself. Just, you know, <laughs> we make the comics we want to read. And I wanted to read a Homerian epic with a woman at the center. And so we swung big. It's... Uh, it's a it's remarkable. Huge, huge it story. is remarkable. I'll tell you what. Yeah. My team and I were That's the over, work of Phil Jimenez, and is, he's just tremendous. It is incredible. I feel like it should be framed. I, I felt bad touching it. I said to my team, I'm like, can I touch this? And we were just talking about what comic book locations are still in New York City. So much has changed over time. But what we know is wherever this is, there are fans, and we are fans of yours. And congratulations for changing the game. But again, more important in so many ways is providing an opportunity for other people from marginalized communities to get involved and be appreciated for their work as well.